Hey, ya fools, this is Carla. I'm here today in my kitchen to share with you the type of love that can only be found in the bottom of a bowl of pasta fagioli. That's correct, today I'm going to be making my classic but modernized version of pasta fagioli. My original version of pasta fagioli was in Where Cooking Begins, and that recipe is based on my mom's recipe, and it was the one that I made starting from college until I wrote that book. The old version used cans of whole tomatoes, which for some people slowed down their bean cooking. This version, we switched to tomato paste. In the old version, I used pork. This version does not. The old version had a pretty straightforward sofrito. This one has a really robustly spiced one. And I also add dried shiitakes to the new version. That's the version of pasta fagioli I'm gonna show you today. It is like all of us, smarter, better, stronger, faster, <laughs> more powerful. And I think you're gonna love it as much as the original, if not more. So the first step to making the pasta fagioli, as always, is making the sofrito. I am using onion, garlic, carrot and fennel. And this is also really typical of what would have been home style cooking in Italy over the years. Keeping the recipe sort of simple to that and true and building flavor based on how flavor would have been built in a simple kitchen is like, to me, honors what, what this dish has always been. Rather than putting all the veg in at once, I'm gonna split it up just so the processor doesn't get too full. I'm gonna just trim the very end of the fennel stalk because this is gonna get chopped up so finely that it will be tender. But the very outer ring of fennel tends to be kind of like the most outside um, pieces of celery, just a little too tough, a little f too fibrous. So that's either compost or waste or rabbit food. Few of you guys have rabbits because I've mentioned rabbits in the past and people do chime in about their bunnies. If you're feeding your bunnies vegetable snacks, please um, let us know in the comments. And if you don't have bunnies that you feed your veg scraps to, this is your sign to like and subscribe. <laughs> Support the channel and just comment Fazool. Fazool. The other, I would say, really genius intervention that I've made on this recipe over the years is that I now just make a really big batch of sofrito from the beginning and I bank half of it before making the entire soup so that the next Sunday when fazool time rolls around again, I have sofrito already made, it's in the freezer and you basically are starting the process at the halfway point. The other thing you do wanna get ahead on though is soaking the beans. I really like to soak my beans the night before. And in fact, in this household, if there isn't a bowl of beans soaking on Saturday night, people will start to get suspicious and nervous and potentially um, mad. The bean that I recommend for this soup is usually like a big white bean. So a cannellini bean, a Corona bean. These are called castellet beans. They're like a tarbay bean. But I've also made the soup with cranberry beans and with pinto beans. So you could use whatever. The other added value of soaking ahead of time is that now I have learned about salting the soaking water, which infuses the bean with seasoning before it even gets into the soup. So we're really like front loading a ton of flavor and it truly pays off. We've got a pre-bean, which is dry, which is hard, which is like not ready for stuff, which is packed together in the gang with everybody else, you know, not opened up. And then post-soak, we have a salty, seasoned, sassy bean. She's hydrated, she's plump, she's delightful, she's bigger, and she's like ready to take on so much more. It's time to move to the stove. All right, now it's time to go to Olive Oil Village, starting off with like a healthy half cup of extra virgin olive oil. This is more than just a cooking medium. This is a flavor. This almost with the vegetables becomes a braising liquid. Okay, I think that was half a cup. Honestly, you're gonna measure out half a cup, but when you add your vegetables, if at any point this doesn't look like super saucy and juicy, the answer is olive oil. I am gonna cook this mixture covered for a lot of the time until the vegetables sweat out all of their liquid and they continue cooking down. They'll lose at least half of their volume. And at the end, it's almost gonna look like a vegetable paste, like practically a puree. But for this stage of cooking, it's really just salt and pepper. 
And then I'm gonna throw the lid on, lower the heat to maintain a really gentle simmer and sweat these out so I get tenderness before they take on any color. When you're in the sofrito zone, you are checking um, this covered situation every five or 10 minutes. And what you wanna make sure is that things are going gently enough to coax out all the liquid without any browning happening. So cover, tell Siri 10 more minutes, watch another scene of Below Deck and come back and stir. Now I'm about the halfway mark, 20 to 25 minutes in. I wanna show you what it looks like at this moment a lot of the volume has been lost. The vegetables no longer have that super vibrant orangey um, color to them. And although I'm not seeing oil bubbling up yet, I am also not seeing like giant um, puddles of vegetable juice burbling in the bottom. You know, things are, are very, very tender and smushable, but not yet all the way cooked. So I'm gonna cover it again. Now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The moment when there's some browning, there's a little bit of sticking, there's very um, visibly apparent oil boublage, and that is the signal that the sofrito is ready to take it to the next level. I'm seeing some browned bits down there, and there's still a lot of sofrito in the pot. I'm gonna set aside the sofrito for the future before adding the spices. That way it's versatile. I could use it for the fazool, I could use it for something else. So I really have expanded and kind of opened up to a lot more spices in the sofrito than those early days. And it just makes for like a fuller, rounder, a little bit more exciting flavor combo. I always have these spices in the cabinet, so it's not, it's not a big deal. Um, that was oregano. This is whole fennel seed. I like to rub them together in my palms, kind of open up the flavor, crack the shell a little bit. I use a mild chili flake. This is Aleppo. You could use a smaller quantity of a crushed red chili. You could omit the spice altogether if that's not your thing. And then half a teaspoon of cumin seed. Cumin and beans are like a match made in heaven. It might not be typical to an Italian recipe, but all of these flavors are super complimentary. And then I also really love the flavor of turmeric. With my beans, it plays so well with the cumin. It's great with the oregano, all of these sweet vegetables. The oil is blooming. The spices that were added, so this doesn't cook for very long before the next things go in. I have anchovies. Anchovies, you know, are really common in Italian food. They're great with beans. They are an amazing way to layer flavor without making something taste like fish. And for the volume of soup that I'm gonna make, like six is, is not too many. My original version, like my mom's version, was cans of whole tomatoes that I would kind of crush up with my hands. Now we get to big tomato payoff with tomato paste. And once the tomato goes in, I wanna cook it for a couple of minutes until I see like some light caramelization for that color to go from like a very russety reddish orange more into a brick red. All right, next up, I've got my soaked white beans and the salted water that they were soaked in. So this whole thing is going in. I'm using the wooden spoon to kind of drag uh, along the bottom of the pot and any brown bits that were sticking, any little bits of sofrito caramelization, the tomato paste, just loosening them up and stirring them into the soup. Gorgeous, jubbly, fantastic. Next up, bay leaves. I use fresh bay leaves now. I used to only use dry. I keep the fresh ones in the fridge. If you have dry instead of fresh, use the dry ones. Dried shiitakes. You could use any kind of dried mushroom. Um, dried shiitakes are really easy to find in any kind of an Asian market. They are packed tons and tons of umami flavor, a lot of richness for something that is like really inexpensive. So two of those. The other thing that if you have in the house you should definitely use is a parm rind. I'm gonna see if I have them. Yes, she has them, but maybe two. You wanna stir uh, occasionally those like to sink to the bottom and maybe stick. So when you stir, just like look for your parm rinds. They get taken out later. And then I need a little more water to top this off. So I'm gonna go back up 
you know. So at this stage, what's happening here is that you're making like a really amazing pot of brothy beans. They're gonna take at least an hour to get tender, probably even after being soaked. I'm gonna turn up the heat now to get up to a simmer. And as soon as that happens, lower to a gentle simmer, partially cover the pot and um, let this cook. Now that I'm at a simmer, even though the bean water was seasoned, the sofrito was seasoned, I'm going to season again with salt and pepper. Not going nuts because I know that my my beans have seasoning in them already and give this a taste. They already taste pretty good. We're off to a great start. A little bit of peps. Now I'm partially covering, checking in about every half hour or so. And what I'm really checking on is bean cookery. I'm looking for a tender bean before I add my greens. All right, hopefully we have tender bean, tender bean alley over here. Been cooking about 55 minutes. Again, depending on the size, the age, the condition, and just honestly, the personality of your bean. It could take a little longer. It could go a little faster. Um, this bean, this is a giving bean because this is a very, very tender bean. And now I'm gonna add the greens. Cooking the greens can also be something sometimes I cook them for an hour and a half. This is curly kale. You can use any kind of kale. You could also use escarole. You could use green cabbage, which I've done um, when I, that was the kind of greens that I had in the house. The rest of these were pre-done. It's a good thing to do while you're waiting for your beans to cook is just prep that kale. And this is going in. Again, it's gonna look like a big volume at the beginning, but as everybody knows, greens really cook down to nothing. So now I'm cooking the greens until they're tender and silky. The beans are gonna finish their cooking here. It's gonna be about another half hour. What a time to be alive. This pasta fagioli is almost done. I've got hot, hot pasta water. Do not cook the pasta in the soup. If you do that, your soup is gonna get thick, starchy, gummy, and weird, okay? Salting this water. Choose a small shape that has some texture. These are really cute little cavatelli. Just something ridge that will catch the, the sauce and the texture and be like nice and fun to bite into. I think it's half a box. I always do an extra handful because I'm nervous. Okay, so while the pasta is cooking, I'm gonna do this other new step that I think does like add something without adding an ingredient, something really nice and special that makes the soup feel a little more luxurious. And that is scooping out like this much of it. I'm gonna blend that soup, get it really creamy, and then pour that creamy mixture back into the soup. Just make sure you have enough of the liquid so that you can actually get a puree going and do this step before you add the pasta because you don't wanna blend the pasta into the soup. This is really Leo's addition to the soup, my child Leo. And I really love that a family recipe like this can grow and change and become a collaboration of all the people who enjoy it and eat it. This is definitely his addition and we love him for Aww. that. All right, so now I've got this creamy blended part going back into the soupy part. That's perfect. Just add the pasta to the soup. So now the pasta and the fagioli are together as the intention was always there from the start. And all I need to do now, stir everything together. Last test before we go to the table. You know, asses and seeds, like it's hot soup time. I think it's perfect, in fact. I taste the heat of the Aleppo. I got all the things. My beans are good. My greens are silky. Pasta, we're ready to eat. Let's go. So even though I followed my own recipe and the soup looks exactly like it's supposed to and smells amazing, it all comes down to actually serving it and taking that first spoonful and watching everybody's face to find out if it's a good batch. And we do that every week even though there hasn't been a bad batch. <laughs> A little drizzle of olive oil at the table has become standard for us as well. 
It's just an exciting moment. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. It's a good batch. All right. Even though my mother Carol is not here, this soup is here because of Carol, and we're having Carol's fried bread to go with it. Yeah, Carol's fried bread is in a video that will be right here. It's also in That Sounds So Good, so if you need to know how to fry bread in olive oil, check it out. So I hope for you that every bowl of fazool takes you to the happiest place, the feeling of comfort, feeling of satisfaction, feeling of independence and originality, and just knowing that you're serving like the perfect Sunday soup.